everyone, this is Christine Summers here at WonderCon. I'm with ID TV, and today I'm joined by Jeff Trexler, Interim Director of Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Christine. It's, it's so great to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, too. How did you get started with this organization, and what inspired you to get involved? Mm -hmm. I'm an attorney myself, and I've been reading comics my entire life. And one of the wonderful things about comics is that they really are about the they really are at the heart of modern life. If you want to understand anything today, whether you're working on the web, whether you are communicating in a PowerPoint for a business, uh, whether you want to just create an idea, have it have it in movies, have it tell your story, you're going to tell it through comics. And at the heart of keeping comics at the center of American culture is making sure that people can't ban comics that they disagree with. And this is one of the things we've been seeing at the CBLDF since I've come on board. Uh, about a year ago, we saw a massive spike in the censorship of comics. The CBLDF was founded in 1986 after a comics retailer was arrested for selling comics that were considered to be obscene. Now in 1986, comic books that were obscene were books like, were considered obscene, were books like ElfQuest or Heavy Metal. Books that are now considered to be classics and nobody would consider obscene, back then it was enough to get somebody sentenced to prison and the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund was a way for the community to come together to lend their financial support, their expertise in understanding comics, uh, or of course their expertise in the law to help keep retailers and others from, at the time, from literal prison. Uh, they succeeded in the first case and the comics community uh, stayed together supporting the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund as a formal organization. It incorporated as a nonprofit organization, got tax exempt status, and it's been working to help creators, retailers, educators, fans for now 36 years. So what we've seen in the past year has been incredible. Um, people figured out who are interested in censoring books that they could use YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram to get publicity for their uh, for their opposition to books. And so they go online and they say that books that are award-winning books that are used in schools across the country, they're now accusing them of being pornographic or offensive. Uh, books that are, uh, books like Mouse, the classic on the Holocaust, because it has an image of the author's mother who committed suicide in a tub naked because of an image of her as a mouse that's considered to be uh, nude and offensive and improper for children and the book was removed. Or the, um, We have books like Gender Queer, which explores gender identity. That's been a topic of, it's been a focus of opposition nationwide. Not just in the South, which many people see it as like a southern conservative thing. It really is something we've seen from California to Connecticut. Opposition. Uh, and even books that um, you would think might not be considered, you're trying to find a connection with obscenity, they've been challenged, like Gene Yang's, MacArthur Genius Award winner, uh, Gene Luan Yang's book, Superman Smashes the Klan, was considered to be improper because uh, people are afraid that teaching kids about discrimination would make kids feel uncomfortable, or American Born Chinese, which was also been challenged in a number of school districts because he's opposing stereotypes, but just portraying the stereotypes was considered to be offensive, and so they're taking a book that is being adapted for Disney+, Plus. it's won multiple awards, and they're taking it out of schools for the very kids who could benefit from it. Wow, I mean, this really is a pressing issue that's plaguing our country. Like, we have the freedom of speech, and yet we cannot have that extend that freedom towards authors who are sharing their own stories and helping um, people understand, you know, different cultures. Mm -hmm. um, really, thank you for what you do, and I just want to leave this, you know, for the viewers. If they're interested in getting involved, how can they um, volunteer or get involved with the organization? Well, comics are a participatory medium. Everybody who, we, we found that everybody who reads comics wants to get involved in comics in some way, whether they want to make comics, they want to critique comics, <laughs> you know, they want to make their own movies. Some people get into makeup and fashion and cosplay. Um, so as a comics as a participatory medium, one of the things that we're finding that people can do across the country is get involved in helping educators, uh, administrators, people at local schools, people in the community who might be afraid of comic shops because retailers are still being uh, uh, threatened with arrest. Um, get help 
educate the community, help others in your community understand why comics matter, why understanding how comics work, why comics uh, literacy matters today, why these books are great and why they should be read and why they can benefit kids. And we work with people, we work with kids, adults across the country to help educate their communities from police officers and district attorneys to uh, school principals, superintendents, teachers and librarians, and parents of course, to understand why comics matter. So you can connect with us, whether you're a lawyer, whether you're a fan, uh, whatever your interest is, connect with us and let's build an army of people across the country who can help defend comics to keep at the center of American life uh, for generations to come. Yes. Thank you so much, Jeff, for your time. Once again, this is Christine Summers here, IDA TV.